So I asked that boy, I said, listen, he was out there a while ago. I said, are y'all dating? He had his little girl with him there, you know. I said, y'all dating or are you married? He said, well, we're dating. I said, well, son, I'm going to give you some river rat counseling here. <laughs> Make sure that she can cook a meal. You need to eat some meals that she cooks. Check that out. Make sure she carries her Bible. That'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. And if she picks your ducks, now that's a woman. <laughs> they got to where they're getting hard to find. Mainly because these boys are waiting till they get to be about 20 years old before they marry them. Look, you wait till they get to be 20 years old, the only picking that's going to take place is your pocket. <laughs> you got to marry these girls when they're about 15 or 16, they'll pick your ducks. You need to check with mom and dad about that, of course. The reason you Georgia boys can deer hunt, duck hunt, squirrel hunt, hog hunt, that's the reason you can do it. What I'm holding in my hand right there. That'd be a Bible. You said, now let me get this right. If it were not for this, you would not hunt here. No, sir. Here's a quote, Georgia. It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. George Washington, your first president. You know what they said? Name the capital of our country after him. You mean he's standing on God and the Bible. Let's name the capital of our country after him. And that's what they did. They erected a huge monument in his honor. Standing there right now. Washington, D.C. The Washington Monument. That top aluminum capstone. It says in Latin, Los Deo. Praise God. Made it equal. They've been endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Hey, Georgia, an unalienable right, according to the writer of your Declaration of Independence, which I'm quoting for you, written by one Thomas Jefferson. Your Declaration of Independence and mine says that we have some God-given rights that no government or anybody else can take from us. The first one he mentioned was the right to live, to be free, and to pursue happiness. Georgia, you know what makes me happy? It's to blow a matter of Drake's head smooth off at about 10 feet. <laughs> it makes me happy. Guess what? He was speaking in a biblical context. All men are created equal. He was no evolutionist. They've been endowed by their creator. He was a Bible man. The writer of your Declaration of Independence. A God-given right to live. If I ask you Georgia folks how old you were, you would give me a year based on your birth day. For instance, if today is your birthday and you are 30 years old, if I ask you how old you were, you would say, well, I'm 30 years old, Mr. Robertson. I say, is that right? Yeah. Let me ask you, Georgia folks, something. One day before your birthday, where were you? You were in your mother's womb, correct? Were you alive or dead? One day before you were born, were you alive? Why, yeah. 
or you would have been stillborn. How about three months before you came out of your mother, Georgia? Were you alive or dead? Why, sure you were alive. It was you. You'd have had a hard time convincing your mother it wasn't you and that you weren't alive, right? What about six months, Georgia, before you came out of your mother's womb? Were you alive or dead? Why, yeah, you were alive. I mean, come on, Georgia. In fact, you were in your mother about nine months, give or take. So when you tell me, when I ask you if today is your birthday, you say, oh, I'm 30 today, I would have to remind you that that's not entirely accurate. You're actually about 30 years and nine months. That's almost 32, Georgia. My point is, I'm a person was correct. And you have a God who right to live. And it's a fool. They let the rick babies out of wombs because they're not really alive. can blow you. What in the world? Arguing about whether it was you in your mother's womb? Come on! It is the most heinous, pitiful, wicked thing I can think of to tear fetuses from their mother's wombs and just go on by. Fifty me. We're going to have to pay for that as a nation. That current cat we have in there, he's a champion of it. I can guarantee you one thing, he ain't no George Washington and he sure ain't no Thomas Jefferson. The Bible is the rock the republic rests on. The rock the republic rests on? You mean the whole United States of America is resting on this book? Andrew Jackson, old hickory. He was your seventh president. Well, I wonder what it says about duck killing and deer whacking. Turkey killing, cow whacking. Let's see. Here's a quote. It was about noon the following day. They were on their journey. Peter went up on the roof to pray. As he was praying, he fell into a trance. He saw what seemed to be a large sheep being let down from heaven by its four corners. Here comes a giant movie screen out of the cosmos coming down the planet Earth. And old Peter, he's standing there. He's been under strict food laws for 1,500 years. Don't eat that. Don't eat this. Don't eat. He's standing there watching. The Almighty, the creator of the cosmos, is sending an old commercial fisherman who is following Jesus. He's sending him a message. So Peter looks at the screen. The sheet contained all kinds of four-footed animals. Oh, uh, this here be a four-footer. <laughs> There's some two-leggers. Let's see, four-footers. Buck deer, four feet. Even a little old Bambi drawn up in there in the rear. She's got four feet. Got to take her down. <laughs> Somebody said, well... I'm telling y'all the message the Almighty sent Peter. The sheep has four-footed animals. You say, what about that old big hog? One, two, three. Yep, there's a four-footer. He's on the sheep. Elk, moose, squirrel, possum, coon, four-footers. The sheep contained all the birds of the air. There'd be one there, right there. There's another one. 
There she ducks. There on the screen. All the creatures that move along the ground, bullfrogs, amphibians, reptiles, and such, and all the fish. A voice from heaven said, Arise, Peter. Kill and eat. Well, let's see now, Georgia. I'm a C-plus man. I just quoted to you Acts chapter 10. Sounds like to me we got orders from headquarters that says if it walks, crawls, flies, or swims, kill them and eat them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Therefore, if you're visiting from Pito tonight, <laughs> we love you. But do we have a story for you? That's why you can hunt. These guys, they read those old King James versions. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. President Madison said, the strength of our new nation is really not this constitution. Everybody was so proud of it, you know, so am I. The strength of it is the laws of God that this constitution is based on. James Madison, he's number five. Well, since we have biblical texts that say if it walks, crawls, flies, or swims, we can kill them. And since the Constitution of the United States does not forbid it, and since the Declaration of Independence encourages it, according to God Almighty, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, O. Abe Lincoln, and me, <laughs> Phil Robertson, Let's get on about our deer killing and our duck whacking. <laughs> Turkey whacking. Right, Georgia? Here's a teal. This be a green winged teal drake. That's all they do. The little hens like this. So you get in your blind. I've never owned a watch, Georgia. I'm 63 years old. I've never bought a watch. You say, well, how in the world you tell time? Right now it's just for dark. <laughs> <laughs> Give it 30 minutes, it'll be just after dark. <laughs> On up in the evening. Just after daylight, sundown, sunset, mid-morning, the dead of night. It'd be about 12 to 4 there. It makes life a lot less stressful. But somebody better have a watch on them because, ladies, we cannot fire a shot and kill a duck until 30 minutes before the sun comes up. And that varies every day a minute or two. The earth rotating on its axis. You say, you mean to tell me that if you fire a shot 31 minutes before the sun comes up, boom, they write you up. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said the same measure you use to judge others on earth that's the measure I'm going to use to judge you. So if I were a game warden, I'd be more merciful about that one than two minutes. <laughs> I mean, that's just me. If you're going to be that strict, you say, boy, wait till the Almighty gets a hold of you. But, so don't do this, what I'm doing. Wait till 30 minutes before the sun comes up before you do that, see? Because when you do this, trust me, the teal are coming. 
They roosted over there. And you do a lot of times, you'll go, you'll hear, won't answer you. Reach over and grab your gun. Won't be long now. Look, it's 30 minutes before the sun comes up. It's almost dark. And all of a sudden you hear, they just, you look up, that's about 15, 20 teal just sitting there. Right in and amongst your decoys. You barely can make them out on the water because it's so early. Well, this is the last time you want to be sporty, Georgia. Don't be sporty here because you jump them up because you want to shoot the birds flying. You jump them up and they get that backdrop on you, that wood line, and they just disappear. Gone. Here's some good advice. Just ground swat the whole bunch and get it over with. <laughs> Somebody said, wait a minute. A man of your reputation and stature would stoop so low with just a ground swat up, a bunch of poor tea with all your son, just boom, 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 just on the water. I mean, unsportsmanlike conduct. You do that to a bunch of little teal swimming on the water? Oh, I don't do it when they're swimming. I wait till they stop swimming. <laughs> Dead steel. You'll get way more of them. That's how you handle teal. Here be a widget. Three licks. That's a widget. Ball paint. Put your finger in the end of that thing. You say, how you doing that? In Louisiana, if you open your mouth real wide and look in a mirror, you'll see a little round piece of meat hanging down. In Georgia, I would think you got one of them. <laughs> You say, what in the world is that for anyway? God gave you that so you could sound like a pintail. Because <laughs> if you didn't have it, all you'd get is... Uh, that's, a, that's a backhoe backing up. <laughs> so you've got to flutter. I'm hitting air on that little piece of meat. If you didn't have it, you couldn't do it. That's why God gave it to you. You got uh, the old Mallard Drake. It's a whistle. But I'm breathing a bass note. I figured out that if you breathed a bass note into that little whistle I had, if it had a stem on it and a little housing, it would come out perfect Mallard Drake. Since I was the only one that had a perfect Mallard Drake, nobody else had one, the only way you could get one is from me. <laughs> there you go. Gadwall. Do this one lick, Georgia. One lick. You don't go. No, no. You have somebody call him with your hand call. Times are hard. We're going after old Woody. <laughs> If he's flying, Georgia, you can't give him. Because you'd be flying, see? Well, everybody's flying, nobody knows where to come back to. <laughs> so if he's, if he's flying, you gotta go like he's sitting and he'll dart back in there. Here's what you do. If you know they're out there, ease up there. I said time's hard. Get in a brush top, thick it. Easy gun barrel through there, get ready, and you give them that sit and call. And you'll hear him answer you. And look, you shake the water a little bit, get you some ripples going. Shake the water, 
They'll answer you, look, and they'll just swim single file <laughs> right up there to where you are. <laughs> Y'all do what you want to. <laughs> I say put a whacking on them and sort them out later. <laughs> on the mallard hen calls, you got ones like this. You've got some like uh, a little higher. You got some that kind of uh, are real soft. So you got all these different tones. This is loud and coarse. When the wind's up, so all these different calls represent all these different duck calls. If you said, look, Robertson, I want to be a world champion duck caller. I want to go to Stuttgart and I want to be the world's best. Here's what you'd have to do. Unfortunately, I've never heard a duck do that. <laughs> so my question was to him, I said, well, look, is that what I'm going to have to do to be a world champion duck caller? They said, you got it. I said, let me ask y'all something. Could a duck win it? <laughs> they said, man, a duck can't even place in the duck call contest. Georgia, when a duck can't win a duck call contest, I don't think I'm going. <laughs> The future of our new nation does not depend on the power of government. That's where we're all going now, see, 200 years later. Power of the I mean, they're buying the car industry. They're bailing everybody out with y'all's money and mine. It does not depend on the power of government. Say what? The future of our new nation depends on the ability of each of ourselves to govern ourselves according to the moral principles of the Ten Commandments. James Madison. President Madison, the whole future of our new nation depends on us living by the Ten Commandments? He would have said, yeah. Have you noticed, Georgia? They'll kill you for your tennis shoes. They'll shoot you dead for five dollars. You lay something down, I don't care if it's Monroe, Georgia, a little town or big town. You lay something down for 15 minutes, somebody comes by, it's gone. Is there any thieving going around in Georgia? We locking up houses, cars, I mean, burglar alarms. I mean, you talk about a thieving bunch, the United States of America. Georgia, I'll start with number five. The reason I'm starting with number five is because about, y'all remember seven, eight years ago when he went in there in Alabama? Some atheist walked into the courthouse in Alabama, saw the Ten Commandments in there, etched in stone. He says, it's a violation of my rights. I don't even believe in God, so I don't think I have to look at the Ten Commandments. I don't even think there is a God. So I want them removed. Filed suit against the state of Alabama. And they hauled him away. James Madison told him, it's the strength of your country. Number five, children honor your father and mother. Georgia, it's been my observation if your children dishonor you and they drive up and down the road wide open, they smoke dope, they tear up people's property, guess where they take them when they catch them? 
the courthouse. Number six, don't murder. Hey, Georgia, when the laws catch you when you've murdered someone, you're going to the courthouse. Right? Before it's over, you're going to end up down at the courthouse. Uh, don't commit adultery. You, you Georgia boys better learn this. Some of you have learned it the hard way. When your woman catches you, gentlemen, or you catch her, it cuts both ways. There's a good possibility you all go down at the courthouse and divide it up and settle it. Right? Don't steal. Arm robbery. They catch you, Georgia. You're going to the courthouse before it's over. Rob a bank. Fraud. Courthouse bound. Don't lie. Ask Martha Stewart where you end up for telling a little old lie to the feds. what they do with Martha? Where'd they take her? Courthouse. Don't covet. You spend more than you have. You want more than you really need. Next thing you know, the bill collectors start calling. They have a thing to call bankruptcy, and that's settled at the courthouse. I'm a C-plus man, but it looks like to me, Georgia, if you're going to end up at the courthouse anyway for violating most of the Ten Commandments, that might be a pretty good place to put them. <laughs> what do you think? I don't care whether you believe in God or not. I can tell you one thing, when a murderer who happens to be an atheist, when an atheist murders someone, here's a news flash, Mr. Atheist, you're going to the courthouse too. And if you have misbehaving children that dishonor you by the way they live their life and they get to tearing up people's property and they violate commandment number five, they go into the courthouse, right? If atheist children steal, they're going to the courthouse. If atheists lie, they're going to the courthouse. They violated what God said. Our country is founded on it, so are all the nations of the earth. They're all based on the Ten Commandments. Well, Georgia, here's the bad news. We know it's a holy, righteous code, the Ten Commandments. And that's just the top ten. Throw on in there hatred, jealousy, fits of rage, envy, factions. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. How have you done with the Ten Commandments, Georgia? There's not a person in this room that's, as a, that's of age... Now, you came out of your mother, you were in great shape. You know why? You didn't know what the law said. Had no idea. Little three-year-old had no idea. But you were just like me, Georgia. When you got up there at a certain age, you knew full well what lying was, stealing was, and immorality was, didn't you? Huh? You say, how do the Russians sin? You see, sin is just violation of law. How well have you done, Georgia? See, I have no idea whether you're a person who is under this code. You know what it demands. The law of God. You know what it demands? 100% Flawless obedience. And none of us even came close. You think you're a pretty good person? Because you had not murdered anyone or you, know, you don't get drunk? God would say, have you ever lost your temper? Been angry? And you would have to say, uh, yeah. Have you ever done one dishonest thing in your life? Uh, well, yeah. 
death. The law is called the law of sin and death. Whoever violates the law sins. You get old enough, you sin, and your sins separate you from God forever. And in and of yourself, you can't do anything about it. You just sin, you die. That's one system that everybody on planet Earth is under. All the Chinese, you say, how do they sin? Just like you did. They lied to each other. They were immoral. They stole things. Their children misbehaved. They worshipped other things rather than God. They misused His name. They hated others. Cursed is everyone under the law. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything in the book of law. We're not good enough to make it on our own, Georgia. No, sir. A holy God built the cosmos. He formed us and made us in his image. The animals, we can whack them and stack them. But us, there's a plan for us. He puts us under a code knowing we were going to violate it. Didn't make us violate it. We chose to. Nobody twisted my arm when I used to get drunk. Nobody was making me be a whoremonger. That's just who I was. Smoking dope. Are you kidding? Ha! Huh. I was a heathen and didn't realize the trap I was in. Sin. America's problem is not financial or educational. Don't let them kid you, Georgia. America's problem is a spiritual one. You know it, and I know it. You say, what happened to Wall Street? There's a bunch of thieving going on. That's what happened to them. What's wrong with their government? There's a bunch of lying thieves up there that's in control of your country. No doubt about it. They never get enough money. We just keep shoveling it in there. Wondering where it's going. Your second problem is like your first one. One that you can't fix. Physical death. See, you sin. You violate what God said. One command. Death. You're dead from then on. Unless you get in on the good news, which is coming. See, I got good news coming, Georgia. But you better know how bad the bad news is. If you've sinned one time before God and you have nothing to do with Jesus, you are done for, Jack. You're never getting out of here alive. Ever. Because physical death is coming along and when that happens, your faith is sealed forevermore. And it is coming. Heart attack. Cancer. Train wreck. Airplane crash. Some fool shoots you for two dollars. Gunshot. You say, I'm going to die physically as surely as the old boy with the whiskers said I was. Yeah, <laughs> so am I. If in the beginning God did not create the heavens and the earth, we're going to die and they're going to throw us into the ground. And we're never coming back, Georgia, unless this is true, and our forefathers believed it was, and 200 years later, I believe it's true. If it's true, there's life beyond the earth. There's life beyond that grave you're going into. If it's not true, all the atheists and all of them will all be together in the ground, never to come forth again. I'll have myself quick frozen. And maybe 500 years from now, medical technology will catch up. They can thaw me out, jump start me, and give me a few spare parts, and I'll go again. I think that's a long shot, Georgia. 
but you want to try it. I'm going with the Almighty. Amen. You say, I'm a sinner and I'm going to die physically. And if I don't do something to find out what that alternative plan is to keeping law, I am going to be forevermore swept into the fires of hell fire. Oh, yeah. Well, what year is it, Georgia? What year is it? 2009, the man said. That means 2008 was last year, 2007 the year before, 2006 the year before. Evidently, if we count all the way back to one, and there has to be a one since there's a 2009. Evidently, something rather big happened 2009 years ago, or we wouldn't all be here in Georgia tonight saying it's 2009 years since it happened. <laughs> well, what went down 200, I mean, 2009 years ago that we're all counting time by? It's when Jesus showed up, Georgia. That's when Jesus got here. We're saying 2009, Anno A.D., Anno Domini, year of our Lord. So when the atheist writes his check out and says, I don't even believe in God, I said, what's the date? He said, well, it's uh, September the 2nd, 2009 years. I said, go on out with it then and tell me what 2009 years mean. 2009 years from what? they like, what are you talking about? I said, you just wrote down there, it's 2009 years since Jesus got here, and you claim this is a myth and a fairy tale. Why are you counting time by the one I'm following? Come on, boy. I know one thing. I know he was here, or we wouldn't be saying it's 2009 years since he got here. Come on, Georgia. You say, we're all counting time by Jesus. Look, Good Friday, it's a national holiday. You say, Good Friday? What was so good about that Good Friday? It's when Jesus died on the cross because we're all sinners. God looks down and says, I tell you what, you can't solve your sin problem and you sure can't solve your grave problem that's coming up. I'm going to send Jesus. And when he comes, the price to be paid for your drunken heathen ways, Phil Robertson, is me taking on a human body and pouring out blood. Now, Georgia, when I heard that, I was 28 years old. I owned a beer joint at the time, and I'm like, say what? The blood of Jesus will take every rotten, filthy thing I've ever done away. Even cleanse me of a guilty conscience. And I had one. I'm like, man. So they killed him. What happened to him? They put him in a tomb because he was dead like all of you are going to be dead. Three days after they put him into the tomb, Georgia, he stood back up on the earth, showed him his hands and his feet, and he said, I'm not a ghost. Y'all think I'm one. I'm not a ghost. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bone as you see I have. Touch me and see. They grabbed him and felt him. They like, my God, you beat death. You want to get off planet Earth alive, Georgia? He's your man. I can tell you this. How else are you get off planet Earth alive? Well, I think I'll take my chances without Jesus. Yeah. Well, now, what chance is that? Have you sinned? Yeah. Are you going to die one day? You could die tomorrow. You say, uh, yeah. Where's the plan without Jesus? 
Why do you think I follow him? Why do you think I came all the way to Georgia to tell you this? He said, why did you come? I love you. I don't want you to be cut off forever. I want you to get out of here alive. Hey, I can see it now. All the ducks and deer we can shoot ain't a game more than anywhere. <laughs> that is heaven, Georgia. Right? What few game wardens make it? <laughs> I don't think they're going to bother us because uh, if they're in heaven, we know they're good men. I think they're going to cut us a little slack once we get to heaven. What do you think? <laughs> so Jesus died for the sins of the world, was buried in a tomb, and was raised three days later. You say, where is he now? He left the earth after he stayed on it 40 days to convince them he was alive because they were having a hard time grabbing it. Hey, Georgia, every time I ever saw something die, he stayed dead. But not Jesus. You say, he went back into heaven without a rocket booster, by the way. Just lifted up off the earth, defying gravity, and left here, and they're all looking. The angels appeared and said he'll come back in the same way you've seen him go. What he's doing there now, he's there 24-7 to remove any sin that you will ever commit in the future. Your past ones are removed because he died on the cross. That same blood continually removes all of your sin, your violations of law, the rest of your days on planet earth. No sin will ever be counted against you again. Unlike law, it's called grace. And is it amazing to take a scumbag like me or you, remove all our past sins, not count any in the future against me, and on top of that, raise my dead from the body, raise my body from the, the, the grave, and give me his spirit to help me as I go? You say, well, what in the world? How am I supposed to, any rules here when once I become a Christian? No. You say, no rules, no rules. That's law. No regulations. That's law. You're out from under that. You'll know the truth about Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. And the truth will set you free from law from the evil one, from the grave. You talk about a deal. It's free. It's free. Unlike law, your salvation won't be based on your works. It'll be based on what Jesus did, is now doing, and what he will do. You're like, I'm not getting to heaven based on what I do. I'm getting to heaven based on what Jesus did. For me. Yeah. It's a deal, Georgia. Free of charge. Uh, what am I expected to do now? No rules and regulations, no. Uh, how about loving God? He deserves it. Created the cosmos. Formed you in your mother's womb. When you see him, he took care of that. You're going to die. He took care of that. You're worrying about life and all this and worrying about your future sin. Took care of all that. Knowing you're getting out alive, you're like, he deserves my praise and my love. I need to grovel at his feet. And on top of that, love your neighbor. That's what God asked you to do. Love him and love your neighbor. Hey, Georgia, does the United States need a lot of love for their neighbor. Do, does it need it? That's what's wrong with us. We put this down. We forgot God. You know, Jesus, who's that? And we wonder what in the world happened to us. Our forefathers had it right. And I'm going to tell you something else. You can double check me every step of the way. You can read what I just told you. You say, well, why didn't you start quoting all these, give me these scriptures. It sounds too churchy. This is not about 
It's not about religion. It's about you and your relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come home. Look at what we've done to Christianity. Splintered it and everybody got their own little group in their headquarters. I mean, come on. Look, put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Repent of whatever it is that's entangled you that the old evil one has you by the throat. Well, just turn from it for crying out loud. You know you'd be better off. Your family would be better off. Your neighborhood would be better off. Your state would be better off. This country would be better off. And the world would be better off. We all know it. It's right here. It's free. We just keep on with this bull, this pace we're on. So turn from it. Stand up on your feet like a man or a woman and say, hey, I'm standing on Jesus, buddy, because the whole thing is crumbling around my ears and I'm sick of it. From the top of our government all the way down to my own neighborhood. I'm going to help turn this mess around. Three, you confess Jesus as Lord. When you believe he died for you, was buried and raised from the dead, you agree to repent, turn from your sins. You say, why did God have us say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God? From this day on, Jesus will be the Lord of my life. Why would he have you say it with your mouth? I believe Jesus is the Lord. Because until Jesus becomes a man's Lord, or a woman's, somebody else has been their Lord. The evil one. You sin, you go under the control of the evil one. That's why you say, I just can't get any traction. I don't know what's wrong with me. No God. Finally, find you a pond, a creek, a pothole, or a bathtub, a big one. And you go in there and you die to sin. And you bury that old person through faith in Jesus. And when you come forth, unlike your first birth, where you came out of a woman, flesh, giving birth to flesh, that birth of water and the Spirit, you're born of God. Adopted as His child, Son or daughter of God Almighty. We know we are the children of God. And the whole world is under the control of the evil one. It's us against them, Georgia. It's a spiritual battle, spiritual warfare. It's not human beings that's our problem. It's the evil one that works in them that's our problem. Don't you see? That's how it works. <clears throat> I say it's time, standing in old Georgia, I say it's time for good men and women to stand on their feet and say, we are going to turn our lives around with the help of God through Jesus and His Spirit. When we receive Him as Lord and Savior, we're going to turn this thing around. Thank you, Lord, for making it available for me. The free gift of Your grace because You were merciful and because You loved us. I owed you that one. Go on about your duck killing, your deer whacking. Fear God. Love Jesus. Love your neighbor. And shoot ducks and shoot deer. You can't beat it. I love you and I'm out of here.